we go from here? Is this going to be a, a lifetime achievement for you? Or are you going to continue in this area? Uh, I think um, I haven't decided on what passion I'm going to be uh, pursuing in the future. However, I do know for a fact that I want to continue raising awareness around mental health. Um, that's been a passion of mine of, to help other individuals to make sure they, that they get the proper support. Um, also, uh, Grant Sheridan passed away um, uh, this summer, and he was a big advocate for mind right. He saw the potential on <coughs> what, what we could do uh, with this initiative, so I do want to carry on with uh, with mind right and uh, kind of take it as far that as as I can to raise awareness for mental health. And through the ups and downs, Corey, of uh, life of a junior hockey player, life of an NHL player, uh, a lot of different and you've gone through this whole depression issue and it's something that you're probably prepared to battle for the rest of your life, is it not? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I have an obsessive compulsive disorder. So when I was 21, uh, uh, I can describe it as something my brain just kind of broke. I can't, I can't describe it any other way. We got back to Vancouver after I'd spoken to a trainer and a therapist came to my place. Because I didn't want to go to a therapist's office and be seen walking in. Heaven forbid an NHL player was seen walking into a therapist's office, be all over the news, whatever. But I was too much of a man and too proud to, to realize that I had a problem. He diagnosed me within 15 minutes with obsessive compulsive disorder. So I suffered for three years, made one attempt on my life, almost made another, and all I had to do was talk to somebody. That's all I had to do was reach out and get help and talk to somebody. So that's why we're here today. And that's why I'm so proud of a man like Miles for what he's doing is absolutely incredible. I've started with a platform. I, I was blessed enough to play in the NHL. He started on his own from scratch, and he's created this whole program, and the things that he has done is absolutely incredible. And Miles, I am so proud of you for what you're doing, and I'm following you, buddy. Thank you. You're the man. place right now. We're in a much better place where you can be public and we're, we're, we're ending the stigma. The, for the person, it's you, you need to be able to talk about it and tell somebody. But I, I'm sure the questions in here are, okay, well, it, it might not be me. It might be a teammate, right? It might be a teammate. It might be somebody that's struggling that you know. Well, for one, you don't need to be afraid of them, for one. The other is, is ask. I talk about ask. That, that's my, my those, those three, you know, that one little word, ask. Ask how they're doing. Uh, if you notice something, if you notice uh, their play has dropped, or you know they're sleeping too much, they're not getting out of bed, or uh, you know grades have dropped, something's going on. And the best thing you can do is ask. Ask how they're doing. Do you want to go for a walk? Do you want to go for a coffee? Do you want to go for a, so? Do you want to go for a beer? Some of you guys are really good for beers now, right? <laughs> but like, talk. Ask them. And you know what? That person might not come to you right away. It might take them a while, but the message say, hey, I've noticed that you're, you know, you're, you're different or something's different, you want to talk. And just let people know that you're a safe place, that you're a safe person to talk to, and that they can trust you. So, usually that's my fault. So, <laughs> so Miles, is that you? <laughs> 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 